What's up, guys, and welcome to a, another episode of the Food is Medicine podcast. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jahangir, and I'm a first-year pre-medical student at Texas A&M University. Now, today, I want to tackle a controversial topic that I believe has been controversial for absolutely no reason, and that's seed oils. If you walk down the middle aisles of any grocery store, you're always gonna find products that have processed inflammatory oils and you cannot escape them. Seed oils are some of the worst fucking things your body can consume. These seed oils were originally created as machine lubricants and they should have stayed that way. Seed oils are of the devil. So let's just sort of dive into what seed oils really are. So when we talk about seed oils, we're referring to polyunsaturated fatty acids or just PUFAs. And there's a different structure between the saturated fatty acid and a uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid. So with a polyunsaturated fatty acid, we have that unsaturated word. And that's basically those carbons in that fatty acid aren't saturated enough with hydrogens and they will have a double bond. So that's what makes it different from a saturated fat. And many people believe that because of this double bond, the polyunsaturated fatty acids can oxidize more easily. But although that mechanism seems true, we don't see that in health outcomes. And there are two essential fatty acids in the body. And when we refer to essential fatty acids, we're basically talking about fatty acids that the body cannot produce, but the body still needs. And there are two essential fatty acids. It's linoleic acid and we have linolenic acid. So linoleic acid is our omega-6 and linolenic acid is our omega-3. Now, many people believe that the bad guy in this scenario is linoleic acid or omega-6. And some studies have actually shown that a high consumption of omega-6 can be, I guess you could say, bad for health. But it's more comparing to the balance of omega-3 and omega-6, which will look into why omega-6 should be is a better substitute in cardiovascular risk and whatnot compared to saturated fat. And uh, a lot of people in the anti-seed oil community will say that seed oils are bad because when you fry them, it'll oxidize and it just really leads to terrible health consequences. But then again, if you heat up an oil to 350 or 375 degrees Fahrenheit to such a high temperature, the oil is going to oxidize. If you did that same thing with olive oil or maybe even butter, you the oil would still oxidize. And we already know that fried foods are detrimental for our health. So it really matters on the pre preparation of that oil and what it's used for cooking. So. It's pretty much the basics of seed oils and unlike a lot of seed oil videos i'm actually going to go through the research to look into the health effects of seed oils and basically focusing on the cardiovascular realm of seed oil seed oils because uh the number one killer in america and maybe, maybe even the world mostly developed countries is heart disease, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, and whatnot. Okay, so there's this first paper by PubMed, which is looking at dietary linoleic acid and the risk of coronary heart disease, which is a big heart or cardiovascular disease in American developed countries. And this is a systematic review and a meta-analysis of prospective cohort study. So when looking at these case studies, we really want to look at the background because someone like you and me who aren't really experts in this field, we need really need to understand the background of the information. So it's basically saying previous studies on the intake of linoleic acid, predominantly the omega-6 fatty acid and coronary heart disease risk have generated inconsistent results and they've performed a systematic review of meta-analysis. And look at this. In the prospective observational study, dietary linoleic acid is inversely associated with coronary heart disease risk in dose response manner. And this data provided supports for the current recommendation to replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat for the primary prevention of coronary heart disease. All right, next study is from the Cochrane Library. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But this is a 
most a very trusted library of just resources or just evidence in general for looking at these meta-analyses and cohort studies. So let's look at this one. Reduction in saturated fat intake for cardiovascular disease. So this is basically looking at saturated fat because I know people in the anti-seed oil community will say that you can eat as much saturated fat as you want. You can eat butter and coconut oil and as much meat as you want. And there's no such thing as too much, which is just untrue. There's always too much of anything, and I'm not a I'm not against saturated fats. I love meat, and I love butter. I love coconut oil, but I'm not out here demonizing the foods that we eat when things like polyunsaturated fatty acids or these seed oils have actually been shown to reduce cardiovascular risk. Okay, the findings of this of this updated review suggest that reducing saturated fat in tea intake for at least two years causes a potentially important reduction in combined cardiovascular events, replacing energy from saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat or carbohydrates appear to be a useful strategy. And when they refer to carbohydrates, they're talking about complex carbohydrates, things that have more in the carbohydrates that have more fiber. So this is our fruits and our vegetables. That's just elucidating the fact that a reduction of saturated fat with an increase of polyunsaturated fat reduces the risk of coronary heart disease. Let's look at this last study, and I'll have a bunch of other studies linked down below looking into seed oils and inflammation, looking into seed oils and like specific seed oils in general, but just wanted to look at these big meta-analyses and as well as just looking at how seed oils relate to cardiovascular events. So last one here, association of types of dietary fats and all cause and cost specific mortality, a prospective cohort study and a meta-analysis with over a million participants. So this meta-analysis had over a million participants. That is a lot of people. And if we look at the conclusion, we show differential associations of total fat. Um, we have the monounsaturated fatty acid, polyunsaturated fatty acid with all-cause mortality. And saturated fatty acid was associated with higher all-cause mortality and uh, cor cardio or coronary heart disease mortality in our meta-analysis. And the type of fat intake appears to be associated with important health outcomes. So from a meta-analysis, of over a million participants, it has been shown that saturated fats can increase all-cause mortality and coronary heart disease mortality. So that's a lot of people, and it's really hard to go against this evidence when there's also a lot more evidence that's backing up the claim that polyunsaturated fats are very beneficial in the substitution. When you substitute saturated fatty acids with polyunsaturated fatty acids, you will see a reduced risk in cardiovascular disease risk. So that concludes this video. Hopefully you guys have been influenced to not demonizing seed oils. And as always, a pomodoro a day will make you a doctor someday. I'll see you guys in the next one.